Hi everyone. I wanted to say hello. Um, I am in Sammamish and I have a lot of questions from everyone uh, on socials and so again I thought I would just group them all together and uh, explain and then hopefully we can all learn and all the info is right here on Instagram. So if you haven't seen the earlier videos, there's answering questions part one, answering questions part two, and um, so now I'm going to move onward with some of the other stuff that I have been asked. Okay, how long are dogs pregnant for? Dogs are pregnant for nine weeks or 63 days, and that point is measured from the moment of ovulation, which of course we all know that's kind of hard to time. So dogs will be pregnant for about 59 to 65 days. Most dogs go into birth around 62 or 63. I don't know what Ruffy has planned, um, <laughs> so I'll keep you posted. Um, let's see, okay, lots of questions about Giovanni, why I chose Giovanni, the chromosome data, the DNA data that's on the site. And um, so I've been fielding a lot of questions about those, so I wanted to talk about that. First of all, there is a breakdown of all of the different dogs and uh, that Ruffy has, Ruffy's parents, of course, had been bred with along her ancestry. Um, and so one friend of mine was asking, oh, so I see she has Cocker Spaniel in her, I see she has Doodle, I see she has Poodle. Um, so why is it then that those percentages, like why are they called a Golden Doodle or a Mini Golden Doodle and not what is the predominant percentage that you're going to see on her DNA? So a lot of the DNA sites will say DNA is different than the indication of breed. And I think, although of course we're all learning here, so if anyone knows, uh, the, if anyone's a veterinarian that knows the answer to this, let me know. From what I've heard, the breed is really more about the weighting of those percentages, meaning what portion of those percentages happened in the last 10 years or the last 20 years. Um, you might be 10% Cocker Spaniel, but um, maybe in the last 10 or 15 years or 100 years, you have more poodles, so maybe the percentages from two, three hundred years ago, although they're bigger, you are now designated more in the poodle category because that those percentages happened more recently. So by weighting, I mean the actual volume, the weight of each percentage can be different over time. Um, so that's how I would explain it, and that's why she's a golden doodle. Um, the past, you know, her generations in the past are golden doodles. Um, okay, so breed versus DNA. Um, how did I find Giovanni and why did I choose Giovanni? So it took me a very long time to research Ruffy's boyfriend and um, it took me a long time to research the data that the breeder had I was deciding between two or three different dogs. In the end, I decided that there was two things, or three things that were important to me. The extent to which the dog was going to be hypoallergenic. Now, I talked about this a little bit before, and I might actually do a whole video on this because people are like really, really interested in, in this, um, this discussion and also just like the details of, of how we have all this information and how to make decisions with it. So the further along down the line you go, whether it's a poodle and a golden retriever, two, two doodles, and then of course if those doodles are bred with two more doodles, the further along down the line you go, you have more control over the extent to which the fur is going to be hypoallergenic. Presumably. This is all such new technology that we don't know exactly, but we do know that the further down on the ancestry line you go, you can isolate genes more. Um, you have more control over the type of fur. Now, when I was deciding on Giovanni, I did a lot of research into whether or not curly fur is more hypoallergenic or straight fur 
is more or less hypoallergenic, and really I didn't see any differences between the two. There is some theory that curly fur um, is curly, and so it keeps the pet dander more on the skin, and so maybe some people feel that that's more hypoallergenic. I personally didn't see any um, differences in the fur, except for I saw that the straight fur that was non-shedding was more hypoallergenic. So that's the reason I chose Geo. Geo has the chromosome that means any time he breeds with any dog, regardless of the chromosome they have, they will have a very specific type of fur with regards to how much it sheds, how long it is, and how straight it is. So Geo has had that, like basically what I was looking for in that gene so that our next puppy could be either just as hypoallergenic as Ruffy or more, because as I said um, before, I have autoimmune disease and I have to be super clear on what is in my house. Um, so that's really the base reason. The other reasons that I chose Geo were that size. So in order to work with the lineage and the ancestry based on what sizes the great grandparents were, the parents, the grandmothers, all that stuff, I needed to size down a couple pounds just to ensure that um, this litter most likely will be under 15 pounds. So of course we don't ever know, but um, all of this is like highly detailed and they've done all the statistics around sizing down, sizing up a pound, sizing down. So there's tons of information out there available to you. So another reason I chose Geo is that he is more 10 or 11 pounds. I think for the, his first year, he was eight or nine pounds, and now he's giving up to 10 or 11. So that's a perfect weight for Ruffy because I wanted to make sure we had that moving scale and it wasn't too far in one direction or the other. That research took going back a few lineages for him as well.